Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. Alright, this is just kind of a catch-up day here, getting ready for everything, you know, preparing everything that's uh, going on and getting ready for the job and getting ready to go back to California. And I just wanted to kind of catch up with a few things. Um, just for the record, today is Thursday uh, and this is the day that, well, tonight my video about me getting the job goes live. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit about what's going on. Um, first off, that one was uh, a little bit of a difficult video to do. I actually ended up having to record it three times. And I recorded it the third and final time uh, this morning. And so it's actually uh, rendering right now and I'm gonna upload it again. Primarily because you know I kind of pulled a little gag on you on that one where I kind of strung out the announcement for a long time and kind of just dragged it out and, you know, that was a kind of a gag that I had originally come up with the day I originally recorded it, but I didn't really flesh it out really well the first time. So I decided I wanted to reshoot it and I reshot it again yesterday. And even yesterday, I wasn't 100% satisfied with how it all turned out. So, I shot it again a third time today and kind of got, and that's the version that, you'll, that you saw when you watched it a couple days ago, tonight from my perspective, but a couple days ago from yours. So anyway, um, just wanted to kind of let you know about that. Also, um, I also want to, want to just kind of let you know what's, what else is going on. I think I mentioned uh, in yesterday's video that I had to go down and take a drug screening test to get this job. Uh, I think I mentioned that yesterday, but yeah, I did that yesterday. I'm supposed to have the results hopefully tomorrow or at very least on Monday. Now they say they won't contact me directly on the issue, that uh, they'll just contact my prospective employer and uh, it'll go from there. So, you know. No news is good news in this case. I don't expect any surprises on that. You kind of know what, you know, you know, you don't take drugs, you know you're not going to pass, you're not going to fail them. So, so that's uh, not really that big a deal. I also got a uh, email manager or an email from the corporate office today. They wanted to me to send them a copy of either a payroll stub from Disney or a copy of a W-2 form. Well, the payroll was all done through direct deposit at Disney so I don't really have any payroll stubs because I could get those if I needed them but they're something that was on the corporate portal and since I don't work there anymore I don't have access to the corporate portal now fortunately I do have the W-2 form so I got that submitted and that should not be a problem so the next big thing I'm kind of work working on right now and I'm gonna go home and do that. Like I said, I just wanna get out and walk a little bit today, but uh, the next big thing to do is I am going to set up an airline reservation to go home to California sometime next week. Probably by the time you see this, I will be either on my way home or back home. So that's the next big job for today. And then I figured, you know what? Since um, we are now to the point where it's relatively certain that I have a job with this new company. I want to tell you a little bit about some of the other jobs I've applied for. I've kind of played them, you know, I've been a little secretive with that in the past because even though I didn't get those jobs, I left open the possibility that I could go back to them at some point. So I didn't really want to name them at, at any point and then end up, you know, going to them at some point, you know, at a later date. So. But since I got something going now, I'm just going to kind of tell you a little bit about those jobs and what they actually were. The first one I applied for, and this was last summer sometime, was for the local ABC affiliate here in Waco, WXXV-TV. And that was the one, like I said, that I got within striking distance. I was like in the top two of their candidates, and they ended up going with the other person. So, <clears throat> you know, that would have been an interesting job. It would have been something that really would have built on my experience and skills from the past but it also i thought had had a downside to it apparently what the job was um when as you know most of the shows that are broadcast on abc 
are either recorded in New York or in Los Angeles, and then they have to be transferred to the individual affiliate stations, and that's done through a satellite downlink. It's my understanding that my job would have been the person to take those TV shows and record them and make sure that the broadcast went normally and all that. And there was a potential downside for that, and that is a lot of the shows I'd be downloading from uh, the ABC flags, flagship stations would be like soap operas or, or The View or something like that. And I thought that had the potential to be mind-numbing, you know, because let's face it, you know, nobody, nobody ever really becomes uh, horribly famous by working on a soap opera. And, you know, whatever on that. But, you know, I, I figured it was something I'd be able to do. I remember when I was working at the CD factory um, that... I, I had to listen to all of the music as we were making the master CD just to make sure no digital errors occurred and that kind of stuff. And we did some of the worst music in the world. Not worst in terms of like, you know, evil content or anything like that. It's just bad quality music. One of our customers was a was a recording studio that specialized in the recording of Vietnamese music and he had just a real assembly line approach to this kind of stuff where every recording sounded like every other recording and I actually went to his studio a couple times and his approach on a lot of this stuff was you know he'd just have a synthesizer and a drum machine and the microphone set up and the individual artist would just bring in their floppy disk would had all their sequ uh, sequence music in it they pop it into the uh, into the synthesizer, they pop, pop it into the drum machine, download all their record, all of their uh, all their MIDI settings, and he just bang it out in one one take, you know. And uh, the mics were always set up; they weren't custom set up for anyone. There really wasn't a whole lot of variation between it because it was the same keyboard, it was the same drum machine, it was the same mic setting. So basically it was almost like listening to the same album over and over and over again and this guy produced an enormous amount of content we probably did three or four cds a day of this guy and as the mastering person i was the person who had to listen to all of that and i finally based on that company alone probably i developed the ability to listen to the recordings without actually hearing them so you know i didn't hear the music it didn't melt my brain having to listen to it but if something went wrong if there was a digital error if if the music faded out wrong or the track changes weren't right i could hear that but i didn't listen to the music in fact that's a talent i still have today i remember a few years ago jordan and i were hanging out and we'd gone out to have something to eat for dinner and we were in this restaurant and they had this obnoxious music playing over the piped in music and I kept hearing Jordan, looking at Jordan, he kept going, oh, oh, this is horrible. And then I finally said, what is it? And he says, oh, this music, it's just getting on my nerves. And I said, oh, yeah, you're right. I wasn't even listening to it. And he said, man, I envy you, man. But anyway, like I said, I didn't get that one. That one, that was the only other job that I applied for, I think, uh, that I really think I probably would have been good at. It would have been a lot of potential to grow, but television is also kind of a dying art too and I kind of learned my lesson about working in the CD world that I need to stick with something that's got a future so didn't get that one the next job was a company called Ferguson um, Ferguson is a plumbing company and I would have been working in the warehouse I had this was this particular branch was a like a distribution house and so we didn't do direct sales we just had warehouse uh warehouses full of uh different plumbing fixtures and when sub vendors needed stuff we'd ship it out to them so i would have had a warehouse person i had a little warehouse experience over at odc so i thought i could do that but i didn't get that job uh the third one i applied for and got an interview with was at Lowe's, Lowe's Hardware. I told you a number of times that I would never work at Home Depot because I like Home Depot too much, but I didn't have a problem working at the competitor because even if I ended up with bad feelings at Lowe's, you know what, I'll still keep going to Home Depot. 
I don't want to end up, uh, you know, poisoning Home Depot the way Disney got poisoned for me by working there. So, but I didn't get that job. That would have been a job working like in the hardware department, you know, selling screws and nuts and bolts and that kind of stuff. Whatever, I could have done that, but didn't get that one. And then the last job that I went into, where I went in about two weeks ago and just and the one that I didn't, and then when I didn't get that one, it, that was the one that evolved into this job that I did get. That was at the local HEB. And uh, what I would have been there is an overnight stock boy. So basically I would have been going in after hours and restocking the shelves at night. Now one of the things that kind of turned me off on the place was that uh, apparently at night, you know, I. I I've, one of the things I've always been looking for kind of when it comes to jobs is I wanted a job where I didn't have to be outside anymore. I'm over that. I did that for 11 years at Disney. And I wanted a job that was inside. And that's kind of what I thought the HEB was going to be. Yeah, sure, I'd be working in, you know, pulling the stuff out of the uh, inventory room and loading it into the store. But I found out at the time that it was a lot more stuff like actually unloading trucks which it would have been outside yeah okay it would have been outside at night but outside at night you know is still hot in the summer and it can be really really cold in the winter so that wouldn't have been such a good thing for me and in addition I found out that the company tended to turn down the air conditioning at night to save energy so that would have been kind of another downside also so you know after I got done with the interview you know, I had some downsides to it. I was st still thinking if I got the job, I'd take it. But I wasn't really that disappointed when I didn't get the job. So when this new one came along, this was, you know, just, I think, the perfect job for me. And I'm really happy that I got it. And, uh, you know, it's all just a matter of processing the paperwork now. So I think that's really all I have to do. Uh, that's all I really have to say today. I think I am going to go back and make an airline reservation to go home to California. And I think that's the end of the end of the vlog today. So thank you as always for watching. And I will see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.